there is an inexorable force in the cosmos where time and space converge. A place beyond man's vision, but not his reach. It is the most mysterious and awesome point in the universe. Where the here and now may be forever. Now. Gravity's at maximum, Dan. Oh my God, I think it's got us. Man is about to enter. We've got a break here, too. The black hole. Scientists uh, talk about objects called black holes. Do you believe in such objects, um, or if so, what are they? Yeah, black hole, I do believe in them, and uh, there's good reason to believe that black holes exist. They're predicted to exist theoretically on the basis of Einstein's physics, uh, general relativity. Yeah, but by the way, I, I have just almost finished writing a book on this topic, and it's gonna be neat, because I love black holes. Black holes are incredibly cool. They're not only a test of physics, but they show us something about the mind of God. They're, they're mind-blowing. I mean, it's, it's weird, but they're neat. Uh, they're basically regions of space where the gravity is so intense that light can't escape. And since nothing can go faster than light, it follows that nothing can escape a black hole. Once you're inside that, that's it, game over. And uh, one way to make them is when a star collapses in on itself. We think there's good evidence that when very massive stars uh, explode, now we know they do that, we see them explode from time to time, that the inner portions of it get compressed together and once they get inside this point of no return, which is called the event horizon, once they get inside that, there's, n there's nothing that can stop them from, from compressing all the way down to a point. So all the mass in a black hole is in a little point in the middle, interestingly, of no size, because if it had any size, it would collapse in. But the region surrounding it, there's like a sphere that is, is there's nothing physical there, but there, you can imagine a sphere around it that is the point of no return. And once you're inside that, you can't escape. Uh, you're going to die once you get inside that. <laughs> so, but there, there are none nearby Earth, and, and that's, that's a good thing. Uh, so there's no, there's no problem for us. Already we can see the Big Bang does not qualify as a good scientific model. It, it's not very simple. It doesn't make correct specific predictions. And it's got problems. And let me discuss just a couple of these problems here. There's the singularity problem. How is it that the entire universe can be contained in a zero dimensional point, basically? What, why is the singularity there? Why did it suddenly expand? Uh, most physics that we know, in fact, physics that, as we understand it, breaks down at that level. There is no physics that can tell us what happens at that level. It hasn't been discovered yet. And so my secular colleagues must take it on blind faith uh -oh. that, uh, that the word. Big Bang is even possible. Yeah. And, you know, we all have faith, but my faith's rational because I have, the word, I have the word of God and it's confirmed by evidence and so on. Once they get inside that, there's, n there's nothing that can stop them from, from compressing all the way down to a point. So all the mass in a black hole is in a little point in the middle, interestingly, of no size, because if it had any size, it would collapse in. Most physics that we know, in fact, physics that, as we understand it, breaks down at that level. There is no physics that can tell us what happens at that level, it hasn't been discovered yet. So all the mass in a black hole is in a little point in the middle, interestingly, of no size. There is no physics that can tell us what happens at that level. It's, it's sort of ironic. It's, it's sort of ironic. And once you're inside that, you can't escape. Uh, you're going to die once you get inside that. <laughs> Weird. But they're neat. Out of all the absurdities from Copernican cosmology, which biblical creationism tries to reconcile with the Bible, I think black holes is one of the most striking examples, and hopefully for obvious reasons, as demonstrated by those two different segments by Jason Lyle. On the one hand, the, the concept of a singularity when, when it pertains to the, the Big Bang itself, the Big Bang theory, is recognized as obviously a, is patently absurd and it defies all the laws of physics and they cry foul in that instance but then when it comes to the claims of a black hole which are purportedly all over the universe and at the center of our own Milky Way galaxy and a very real and observable phenomenon of astronomy 
indeed it is ironic that suddenly it's not absurd at all and it's a it's a real phenomenon and the idea of the the laws of physics breaking down and and it being this counterintuitive mind bender of a night of a claim is suddenly okay and it really just highlights the the pickle that you know the black hole that we've dug ourselves into part of the pun in trying to reconcile a, a cosmological system that that was absolutely created in order to serve as the baseline for all of evolutionary theory and yet when that is ignored then you you constantly wind up in this position of trying to kind of pick and choose and go back and forth and talk out of both sides of your mouth when you're affirming and rejecting various elements of the same underlying cosmological system. So, you know, part of me wonders if... The, it's almost like, like it's a joke, like the black hole concept was rolled out just to see just to see how thoroughly indoctrinated the public was in terms of embracing gravitational theory and relativity and all this to the point to where you could actually assent to the idea of you know the masses of planets and stars and, and just inconceivable amounts of matter being compressed into a zero dimensional space like if you <laughs> like it's the litmus test like if you can embrace the the absurdity of this then then, then they have succeeded, you know? And of course, then it's it's sort of a stepping stone into the, the next phase that we're now in of the, the metaphysics, all the quantum physics strangeness that now they're trying to explain how, you know, all the laws of physics break down. I mean, if they can break down in a certain area just because you have a sufficient amount of mass to create a sufficient amount of gravitational pull, well, then, you know, really you're redefining physics overall. And, you know, and that's the whole point of, you know, the whole point of the, the Big Bang, of creating a singularity for the Big Bang, was to try and explain where phys physics came from, where everything came from, matter and energy and motion. And, and of course, it does make me think of the, the, a quote from Ter Terence McKenna. I think I used it in a video a while back, but where he's talking about the Big Bang and the singularity, and basically the singularity of the Big Bang being where the science... Science was essentially just asking for one free miracle. You know, give us one free miracle and we'll just take it from there. But then, now they're saying that the universe is full of 10 to the whatever power of singularities. Because that's, you know, because that's what a black hole is. It's a singularity. And not only that, but you have the whole theological absurdity of the idea. I mean, even without black holes, the Copernican universe is just this insanely vast stretch of phenomena that are equate to... To instant death for you know a human being you have distances that are so vast that you can never travel them in uh, you know a thousand lifetimes even if you were going the the alleged speed of light you have extreme cold and extreme heat you have all kinds of radiation and gamma rays and meteors and <laughs> and all this but as if all that wasn't enough then of course you have these these black holes where if you happen to cross over the event horizon and get pulled into the inescapable gravitational pull, then you're going to get crushed into a zero-dimensional point. I gotta say, I was my curiosity was really piqued to hear uh, Jason Lyle mention that he was working on a book on black holes because he thinks they're so neat, quote-unquote, even though they're, <laughs> they would absolutely kill anything that gets too close to them. You know, in saying that they actually reveal a lot about the mind of God, I'd be really interested to hear what uh, I was going to try and spin that one. But I don't think the book has come out yet, so we'll see if it if it ever does. You know, this whole idea of just an absolute, this phenomena of death. This it's like a you know this gaping. You know, you can't depict a black hole as anything else when you see it in science fiction or even in, um, you know, astronomy specials on Nova or whatever. It's <laughs> It's just, it's just, it's a representation of absolute, you know, uh, just an absolute inescapable pit of nothingness. And so to even suggest that that is something that God would create in order to demonstrate an aspect of him as a person, especially when it's something that can only be discovered by atheistic scientists with their telescopes and, and observations, it, it's pretty staggering. So it's, it's, again, it's one of these things where 
some people will see the absurdity and other people, of course, will dig in their heels and defend it to the bitter end, even though it really has no theological purpose, it has no practical purpose, it has, and it doesn't even have a, a cosmological purpose or a necessity, I suppose, you know, where, again, there's this, this self-contradiction, this double standard where the creationist astronomer, like Dr. Lyle, will scoff at the Big Bang theorists and you know, we'll say, well, they still can't explain why the singularity was there in the first place or why, you know, why it happened, why it suddenly expanded. But, you know, we have God, so we know why there is an origin, because God just made everything. We know why, well, you know, because God chose to make it so. We don't need to invent. But then they still turn around and talk about black holes being these anchor points for galaxies and anchor points for the universe, as if God needs to create this crazy black hole of crushing nothingness in order to secure the creation, you know, across across this vast universe, supposedly. It's just, again, it's just contradiction upon contradiction and absurdity upon absurdity, and it really is encouraging to see more and more people stopping and waking up and extracting themselves from this these logical fallacies and these just, these absurdities that just derive from nothing else but trying to have it both ways and and attempting to to stay true to the bible to a limited extent but also maintain a, a modicum of validity in the eyes of the world you know of an evolution believing atheistic godless world and that is a double standard that inevitably leads to double speak and self-contradiction into logical fallacies and uh it's just kind of a sad state of affairs but we do see more and more people waking up every day so that's something to be excited about